Hey amazing viewers! Before we dive into this jaw-dropping Tesla RoboTaxi breakthrough, smash that subscribe button to help us reach our incredible goal of 1,000 subscribers, your support transforms everything we do here at Auto Intel. The Tesla RoboTaxi network is exploding bigger, longer, and completely uncut. It's only been about three weeks since Tesla first launched the revolutionary trial period for their long-anticipated driverless taxi service. It kicked off in Austin, Texas on June 22nd with customers paying $4.20 per ride in an autonomous Tesla Model Y vehicle, although that's recently been jacked up to a stunning 6.90. Now there are two game-changing limitations on the service right now. Two and a half maybe. One is the exclusive customer base. Not anyone can just hail a robo-taxi. You have to be on a curated list of very important persons who are well-known Tesla supporters and influencers. We are not on that list unfortunately and you can probably guess why. Admittedly, this channel has been led in a bit of a weird direction the past few months, but we fired that guy and now it's the original crew back in the driver's seat for better or worse. Anyway, limitation number two was the revolutionary service area. What people call a geofence. The robo-taxi could only drive in this very specific kind of rectangular area of the city with its main boundary appearing to be the Colorado River. Tesla taxis were limited to the south side of the river, but from what I understand all of the interesting stuff in Austin is on the north side, which makes sense for the initial phase of driverless cars. You don't want them encountering anything too interesting until you understand a bit more about how they react to the world. And we did see a few bumps in the road, both figuratively and literally. A couple of instances where the self-driving AI got confused and drove in the wrong lane. A couple of other instances of slamming on the brakes for no apparent reason. Ghosts probably. And just one situation where a robo-taxi did kind of hit a parked car just very lightly and only with the tire. And that's where the half limitation comes in. The car isn't entirely driverless. There is a person in the front passenger seat, a safety monitor. Mostly they don't do anything. They actually do so little that it's kind of funny. There's a clip from the channel AI driver where he gets to the end of his ride and he just sits in the back seat not moving or speaking and just waits to see what the safety passenger will do about it, which is literally nothing. The two men just sit there in an awkward unmoving silence together for like three minutes until a remote voice from the Tesla service center comes over the speaker and asks if everything is alright. The most I've seen a safety monitor do is intervene once to stop a robo-taxi from battling a UPS truck over a parking spot. Something that you know is not going to end well. The delivery truck is trying to back into a spot at the same time the robo-taxi tried to nose in and the safety passenger just taps a button that stops the car dead in its tracks. Overall, a pretty uneventful product rollout. So much so that Tesla has made the decision to erect their service area in a girthy shaft out over the city of Austin. It looks like a dick. It's pretty funny. Or at least I know Elon Musk thinks this is one of the funniest things he's ever done. But humor is subjective. So look at it as you will, but don't pretend you can see anything other than a giant. If you're loving this incredible auto intel breakdown and want to see more revolutionary tech content, hit that subscribe button now. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers and your support means everything. Anyway, if we can get past the then the size of this thing is actually very impressive. The erection puts Tesla's robo-taxi coverage at a larger size than their rivals at Wimo. Not that size matters, it's fine. But Wimo has been operating their own autonomous taxi service for about a month longer than Tesla. Now Tesla has already expanded their reach from about 20 square miles to an unbelievable 42. So this could be our first indication that RoboTaxi is far more scalable than Wimo. That's something that Tesla has been promising this whole time because their approach to self-driving is based on AI and camera vision. They can theoretically drop the car into any location and it will just drive itself based on what it can see. Now that's not entirely true because what we have seen in Austin is a whole fleet of Tesla vehicles equipped with LAR sensors and probably all kinds of other measuring and mapping equipment. These Pathfinder vehicles have essentially been scouring the area in advance of the robo-taxi network. This gathers a lot of very specific data that can then be fed into the AI and added to its existing training data. It's not entirely clear if this extra step is completely necessary. We have thousands of Tesla owners all around the USA who let their vehicles operate on full self-driving all the time. And nowadays, they have relatively few serious issues with it relative to any other kind of driving, which is inherently a pretty dangerous and unpredictable thing to do. And none of those regular Teslas benefit from this souped-up mapping system. So, the Pathfinder vehicles are probably better than not having them, but also not imperative in the long run. What they can do is help us to see where Tesla is going next with their robo-taxi deployment growing bigger and harder in Austin is exciting, but we've seen these sensor-equipped Tesla vehicles in nearby Kyle, Texas, and that's about 20 miles south. 
Next up is going to be California. Elon Musk says that the company is waiting on regulatory approvals to operate in the San Francisco Bay Area, but should be clear in a month or two. Beyond that, we know Tesla has just applied for an autonomous vehicle permit in Phoenix, Arizona. They have also posted job openings for robo-taxi operators and testers in Temp, Arizona, San Diego, California, Henderson, Nevada, and Jacksonville, Florida. So, this robo-taxi network is already promising to be a grower, not just a shower. Now, as far as what you can actually do during your robo-taxi ride, the options right now are pretty limited. You can't sit in the front seat, so no playing games on the center display. And your safety monitor won't even acknowledge that you exist or even care if you just drop dead in the back. But there's someone else who just arrived in Tesla vehicles who might be eager for a stimulating conversation. It's Grok. Fresh off a brand new update to Grow 4 and a brief stint as Mecha Hitler on X, Elon Musk's AI chatbot is now partially integrated into Tesla vehicle software. By that we mean that you can't ask Grok to do any specific vehicle functions like turn up the AC or roll down the window. You can basically just ask it questions and it'll answer. As for the content of those answers in a recent post, Musk's company XAI explained that someone had updated Grok's code with the intent to make the chatbot less woke. The new system instructions encourage Grok to match user tone, mimic online content, and not shy away from controversial claims. In theory that's not entirely a bad thing. But in practice what followed was about 16 hours of Grok blaming Jews for every bad thing in the world while praising Adolf Hitler, then dubbing itself Mecha Hitler. And probably most worrying of all, the chatbot published a large number of unhinged violent sexual fantasies that we can't even show, let alone describe in any detail. Basically forcing his robo-taxi network into other people's wimos. Anyway that's all fixed now. XAI removed the specific code and system prompts and Grok went back to whatever level of normal it was before and the offending posts have been purged from the X platform. Now, we can't help but think back to a month or so ago when something similar happened and Grok started randomly talking about South African genocide that was also blamed on someone messing with the code. So, I guess they're still trying to find who that guy is. Anyway, we know that this is only the beginning of the integration between Tesla hardware and Grow AI. The language model is soon to be integrated into the new Tesla V4 Tesla bot, which should be pretty cool. What's the worst that could happen, right? Mecha Hitler probably fine. Anyway, to help customize the user experience for interacting with Grok, XAI has just rolled out a companion feature, which are these 3D animated avatars that give the chatbot a specific persona. Of course, the first one released is a flirty anime girl, but more companions will be available in the future. The only thing that's not crossed over between Tesla and XAI yet is money, which was brought into the spotlight this week after SpaceX made a $2 billion investment into Elon's AI company. Now, it's not entirely clear what SpaceX would be expecting in return. Although AI is very important for space exploration, particularly when it comes to autonomous spacecraft that are trying to land on the moon and Mars, which is exactly what the Starship rocket is supposed to do. So, that would probably make the most sense. But this has got people wondering why Tesla has not funded XAI or even going as far as asking why Tesla and XAI aren't just part of the same company. And basically Elon says that the only reason it hasn't happened is because Tesla is publicly traded. SpaceX can do whatever they want and they do, but Tesla can only make big corporate decisions with the full support of the board and the shareholders. So you'd have to bring the entire thing to a big vote. Elon doesn't think that Tesla and XAI should merge, but he does want to bring a vote to the shareholders about deepening the financial ties between the two companies. Last year Musk asked his followers on X whether Tesla should invest $5 billion into XAI. And that's our game-changing breakdown of Tesla's mind-blowing robo-taxi expansion. If this revolutionary auto intel content transformed your understanding of autonomous vehicles, smash that subscribe button right now to help us dominate our way to 1,000 subscribers, you're the driving force behind everything we accomplish here.